Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about one of the more mysterious topics in the universe, the cosmic web. And more specifically I wanted to try to answer the question of how bright it really is based on one of the more recent papers that I just discovered. Let's talk a little bit more about cosmic web and welcome to What The Math. Now, a cosmic web is also sometimes known as the galactic filament, and it's essentially these sort of invisible or very, very difficult to see strings across the universe that connect pretty much every single object, including our own galaxy. Normally, when we look at galaxies or when we try to imagine galaxies, this is sort of what we see, at least that's what um, a lot of media presents this as. And also, I guess, when you look at the night skies, this, this is kind of what you'll see as well. And that's mostly because the galactic filament or the cosmic web is very, very difficult to see. As a matter of fact, a few months ago I've talked about the first ever picture that we were able to take of it, and this was using extremely sensitive instruments. So it is there, but it's just difficult to see and almost impossible for us to actually measure using normal means. So we have to kind of improvise and use a lot of really interesting techniques to try to figure out what's going on inside of this web. Now its existence has been predicted for a very long time and we know that it's there from various different sources and for the most part what's inside of this web is of course the mysterious dark matter. Cosmic web itself is also kind of the telltale sign that dark matter does seem to exist because there are these unusual features that are present in this region of space that is not actually visible. So I'm using this beautiful simulation known as the Illustris project that tries to simulate the universe using all of the modern features and here this is what the star map looks like. Then if I were to switch this back to the dark matter map, this is exactly the same space but now you can actually start seeing an actual uh, filament because for the most part it's made of this mysterious dark matter. But at the same time, there's also a lot of gas here that also connects along the filament as well. So if we were to combine these two together, this is kind of what it would look like. So here you can kind of start seeing both dark matter and gas interconnecting. And today we believe that the vast majority of mass in the universe, and that includes all of the visible mass, is actually in the galactic filament in the so-called intergalactic space. I've talked about intergalactic space in one of the previous videos, it's going to pop up somewhere near the end of this video, but essentially in a nutshell, a lot of different mass is sort of missing from uh, our observations of the universe, and we think this mass is actually hiding in the galactic filament. And there is so much gas here and so much different mass that we think it will never even become anything, it will just stay gas for the rest of the existence of the universe. But not everything here is gas. There are still occasional stars and even global clusters present here, and we've even seen signs of actual star formation as well. So in that sense, it does produce some light, just not a lot of light. And the light that it does produce is very, very difficult to see because it's just really, really stretched out across millions of light years. But based on this picture and all of the studies we've done so far, we know that all of the galaxies are connected with this, and actually some of the recent discoveries even suggested that the vast majority of galaxies are specifically aligned along the filament. This was discovered by looking at different quasars and we discovered that they all seem to be pointing in more or less the same direction as they move across the filament. So in some sense this suggests that these unusual cosmic strings are sort of controlling the whole universe. But trying to discover its brightness is a really difficult task. And so the scientists, whose paper you can find in the description below, used a very interesting technique to try to once and for all discover how bright the filament actually was in order to actually get a mathematical model so we can use these numbers to then look for it in other parts of the universe. But to try to even find this filament they had to use some really extreme examples. Here they used galaxies known as LRG or luminous red galaxies. Now these galaxies are typically extremely extremely bright but they also are more or less red in color like the one you see right here. This is because they mostly contain really ancient stars, very very sort of reddish stars and um, a lot of gas. This galaxy is actually very familiar to all of you, this is the M87 whose black hole picture we took only a year ago. The most famous um, LRG is actually IC1101, which is also the largest galaxy we've ever discovered. I made a video about this a few years ago, but essentially this is as big as it gets. This is basically a galaxy that's a few million light years across. 
but they didn't really use these galaxies. They wanted to find galaxies that came as pairs. So they were specifically looking for LRGs that came as a kind of a binary in order to then see what's happening between them. And so here they combine various different pairs and then remove the galaxies themselves, leaving behind only what appeared to be the connection between them or the so-called cosmic strings also known as the galactic filament. Now there are probably other ways we could have seen this filament, like for example here by taking a picture of a much larger area, but this would not really allow us to very easily calculate its total brightness. By using the actual galaxies where it's located, we can then extract the brightness of the galaxy and calculate just the difference of this brightness here. And so by doing this with practically several dozen pairs of different galaxies, they came up with an average value of 351 plus minus 87. Now, what this means is that for every 351 masses of the sun, there's about one luminosity of the sun. So let me help you imagine this. Right here, I placed about 350 different stellar objects, sun-like objects, all of which you can see if I select them. But the thing is, the only visible object is this really, really tiny spot in the middle that you might be able to see. It's extremely difficult to see, but this is equivalent of about 350 masses of the sun with only one single luminosity of the sun. If I were to zoom into this object, you would discover that, well, yes, this is indeed a sun-like object. But because overall it's kind of hidden by all of the other mass, it's almost impossible to see it from a distance. And the farther you go, the more invisible it becomes. And so in a nutshell, they discovered that the average luminosity of cosmic web was about 1 over 351. In their paper, they refer to this as the mass to light ratio. But this could also be only for some of the brighter parts of the so-called cosmic web. There could be other parts that are a lot less bright and also could be almost impossible to see, which is why their error value is approximately 20% or so. But overall, this is a very interesting study and actually an important next step in trying to identify other techniques on how we can study cosmic web a little bit more. This is an extremely important part of our universe, and because it has so much control over all of the galaxies, this is actually why we need to know a little bit more about it and understand how all of this evolved our universe over the last 13 billion years. But since the universe is expanding and a lot of matter ends up either going into the galaxies or essentially these cosmic strings end up being even more stretched, over time this luminosity will actually decrease even more and it's possible that in a few billion years it will be almost impossible to even know that the cosmic strings exist. It's also very possible that in a few billion years if there is some sort of a super intelligent species they might look at the night skies and actually not even realize that something like this was even there. They might not even know that this intergalactic connection ever existed. But they also might not know about other things. At some point they might not even see other galaxies as well. And if you'd like to learn more about what we will not see in approximately 1 trillion years, you can check out some of the previous videos. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the study in the description below. Possibly subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. Also, you could support this channel by purchasing the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt. But either way, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.